Hey, this is Dr. Allo once again. So today we're going to talk about diastolic heart failure. It's a little bit more complicated than systolic heart failure. The cardiac cycle is two parts. One is systole, which is the squeeze, and one is diastole, which is the relaxation phase, which, which is about two-thirds of the cardiac cycle. Um, the systolic heart failure is pretty simple. The heart just doesn't squeeze as hard. There's a lack of forward flow. Diastolic heart failure also produces a lack of forward flow, but in a different way. The relaxation phase is not as strong as it should be, and that's the problem. Um, there's a lot of causes for it. Usually atherosclerosis can cause it. Even, even low amounts of 20-30% blockages can, but the number one cause is usually long-standing hypertension um, for a prolonged period of time. Um, but what happens is when you don't relax, um, the, the blood backs up into your lungs. Um, when the heart relaxes properly, um, it has a suction effect, almost sucking blood out of your left atrium and then out of your lungs. So when your heart isn't relaxing, blood kind of backs up into your left atrium, which backs up into your lungs, which makes people short of breath. There's a lot of people that have the shortness of breath and present like normal heart failure, but they're not in heart failure. We check an echogram and their systolic function is fine. Back in the old days, we used to call it non-systolic heart failure because they're clearly in heart failure, but their systolic function is totally fine. So we used to call it non-systolic heart failure. Now we have found ways to quantify that better and measure it better, and we call it diastolic dysfunction or diastolic heart failure. When they're acutely ill and they're hospitalized, the treatment's almost the same. You diurese them, you control other, all the other factors that you can, get fluid off of them, and then the heart pumps more efficiently, relaxes better, pumps more efficiently, and forward flow um, is restored, and then they feel just fine. Um, but what do you do with them outpatient? The problem is when you got the heart tachycardic, the, 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 the diastolic phase shortens even more. So you want to prolong that uh, phase. The easiest way to do that is to prevent tachycardia. And usually a medication like metoprolol, which is a beta blocker that doesn't really lower your blood pressure, it just slows your heart down or prevents it from speeding up, is the medication of choice. Now, if I were to summarize all of the research we've ever done on diastole, we've tried almost every medication you can imagine to help with diastole and help that relaxation phase, and it turns out almost nothing has worked um, other than preventing tachycardia. The, uh, the single other thing that has helped, actually, is exercise. We found that people are deconditioned, their heart is not as elastic, not as pliable. Um, one thing that does help is to get them into an exercise program so that their heart gets kind of used to contracting and relaxing more. That does seem to help. Preventing tachycardia helps. Um, and that's kind of about it. There's not really a whole lot more uh, that we can do. Um, the reason this happens is your muscles over time um, become less pliable or, or less compliant, less elastic, and, and they don't relax enough. Um, kind of like, um, you know, pipes that get old or, or you know, um, your muscles just aren't as compliant as they used to be when you were younger. We find this mainly in people over the age of 50 and seems to be a lot more in females um, than men, or at least they manifest the sim symptoms a lot more. Um, but we usually get an echocardiogram and we can figure out if you have this or not. And a lot of times, even if the echo comes back normal, we've checked everything else, but you're still acting like heart failure, then we know you have diastolic dysfunction because not all, not all echo labs are check that. I mean, now they do, but they didn't used to in the past. Um, but now we know people have it and we know kind of how to treat it. It's not the easiest thing to fix, but like I said, if they're acutely ill, like an inpatient that's overloaded, you want to get fluid off. The one thing you don't want to do outpatient is over diuresum. If you over diuresum, the, the cardiac chamber and the volume of the fluid in there goes down. They become even more tachycardic and hyperdynamic, and you worsen um, the relaxation phase. You worsen diastole. Another thing you don't want to do, usually give them a medication like digoxin. Digoxin makes the contraction stronger. You have a heart that's barely relaxing properly, and you're making it contract harder which is kind of counterintuitive, so you, you probably don't want to give them that either. And that's kind of all we have. There's not really a whole lot on it, but this is the way I approach it, and this is the way I treat it with my patients, and this is generally how I explain it to them. You have a relaxation problem. It's quite common, and it does happen. Thank you for listening. Hopefully you've learned something. Spread the word. Share this video with all your friends, and hopefully they can learn something too.